Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. The quarterfinals of the Euros have concluded, and now we will be having England versus Denmark in one semi final. And as we spoke yesterday, in the other semi final, we will be having Italy versus Spain. All the teams are just two steps away from fulfilling the dream of lifting the Euros, but from here on, there would be no room for error, the pressure would be maximum, and hopefully, we will be witnessing some beautiful football with all the talented players involved. But coming to the agenda of the day, we would be speaking about how England breezed past Ukraine, we'll talk about how the English side manhandled the team in yellow to cement their place in the semi-finals. So let's get started. If we start by having a look at the setup, England used a 4-2-3-1 formation, with Harry Kane leading the line and Jadon Sancho and Raheem Sterling on either flanks. Ukraine on the other hand fielded a flexible 3-5-2, which would quickly turn to a 5-3-2 without the ball as you can see in the setup. And what we used to see is that Ukraine would stay very narrow with their setup. The three in front just ahead of the back five remained in close proximity with each other and this prevented England from attacking through the centre. At times, to make up for the numbers, Harry Kane himself used to drop deep, looking to get involved in the build-up play, but soon England started stretching the defence of Ukraine. An attempt was made to create an overload on one side and a quick switch of play gave more freedom to the wingers and the fullbacks on the opposite end. A number of times, we saw the two attackers, Raheem Sterling and Jadon Sancho, coming inside, attracting the defenders, and this allowed the two fullbacks, Luke Shaw and Kyle Walker, to make those overlapping runs, and I would say the third goal was the best example of how this played out on the field. You can see here, Ryan Sterling had Kyle Walker making the overlapping run in behind, Sterling spotted that, released the ball for Walker, Walker puts in a delightful ball for Kane, and Harry Kane, with all the abilities he possesses, he surely had to put the ball beyond the Ukraine keeper. But coming to the first half, we had England dominating the game, and to say the truth, the gulf in quality between the two sides was clearly visible. The England team was much better, they were controlling the tempo of the game, they were quicker, pressed with intensity, at times Ukraine attempted to build from the back, but England had quick players up front, they pressed high up the pitch, and at times they forced Ukraine into committing errors, that too in their own half. The first goal that the England scored, Ryan Sterling again had a major role to play there, the vision that he showed to make the slick pass and release the ball for Harry Kane was admirable, and Harry Kane, like a poacher, had no trouble in putting the ball at the back of the net. And honestly speaking, Ukraine were really struggling against England. England came out charging, and it was only when Kristoff got injured and Ukraine were forced to make some tactical changes that they switched to a back four, and only then were they able to gain some control. Miranchuk and Yamalenko attempted to create some panic, but those attacks were dealt with by the English defence, and as the referee pulled the curtains on the first half, England had the noses in front. However, Ukraine were only a goal down, and the positive 10-15 minutes towards the final stage of the first half surely would have given them some hope. A single goal lead is never a comfortable one and the manager must have attempted to motivate the players, he must have tried to lift their spirits, but to the misery of Ukraine, England again started the second half on a high. They got the second goal through Harry Maguire, just like that, all the planning of the Ukraine manager was dumped out of the window and within an hour the game was done and dusted. Jordan Henderson then put the final nail in the coffin, England were playing with swagger and they really crushed the spirit of Ukraine. The Ukraine players never looked like they were up for the task, the defending was sloppy, the defenders were caught ball watching, they lacked aggression while defending the corners, they were giving away cheap free kicks in dangerous territories, and it truly was a disappointing night for Ukraine, an enjoyable one for the English fans, and rightly so, they deserve to be happy after seeing their team thump Ukraine, but it was all one-way traffic. Ukraine never looked like they could take the game to England, and for the neutrals, it wasn't much of a contest. The game was dead after the hour mark, Ukraine Ukraine heads had dropped, at times it almost looked like it was a men against boys contest, so yes, Ukraine could have done better, they could have put in some more effort, but credit to England, they have done well in this competition, they have a few good attacking players, players like Harry Kane and Raheem Sterling have the ability to be difference makers for this side, they have a good crop of youngsters in Jadon Sancho and Mason Mount, both of them had a very good season for their respective club, and the most important thing that Gareth Southgate has managed to do is tighten up the defence. They have not conceded a single goal in this competition up till now, and that is a commendable feat. They kept clean sheets against the likes of Germany, against the likes of Croatia, so certainly this English side is taking a few steps in the right direction, and they certainly have the potential to go all the way. So those were my thoughts regarding the match between Ukraine and England. Do let me know your thoughts regarding the same. I will see you next in the analysis of the semi-final clashes. But till then, take care, and have a happy Sunday, ladies and gentlemen.